What's up GQ? I'm Al Nia, and today we're going to be going through some of the year's biggest tunnel fits from the NBA. I am a style coach. I work in this sport called style and I have my hands in, you know, curating a lot of the looks for some of your favorite athletes and entertainers. Style is a sport. Just like how these guys step out in the arena and they're competing against one another, you're doing the same thing with your style. And what I love about style so much is that everyone can compete. You know, I might not be able to get out there and compete against LeBron, but I can compete against LeBron and at the GQ party. For me, Kyle Kuzma has taken the, the throne. Kyle has said like, I want to be recognized as the NBA's fashion guy. And he's doing a great job with it. Very, very polarizing. The looks feel very, for some reason, I want to use the word animated because you feel like each look can be its own character. You know, there is no like super cohesiveness, but it's almost like he's walking into a booth and coming out as a different, you know, a different person. That's what's interesting about it. And I think that's very, very intentional because he experiments with everything from wearing jackets with no shirt on the knee, wide pants. There's no silhouette, no shape, no fabric, no cut that he avoids any type of headwear. You know, like he's not afraid of anything. That's Kyle Kuzma in, in a nutshell, like not afraid to really just go for it. My favorite out of all these to me, it has to be the purple Raph Simmons blazer with the Raph Simmons hat because I saw that on the runaway and I was like, how? I wasn't sure how anyone would be able to pull that off. Not saying you couldn't wear it, but pull it off. And I think, you know, they did a great job in really pulling that off. Because if you see the look on the runaway, I didn't see how that would translate to the NBA. And I was curious to see if, there was any, if I was going to see any NBA player work that into their, their wardrobe. And they did it, did it right. They toned it down, obviously, with the black jeans and the red sneakers. But that's probably my, my favorite. Shea Gildress Alexander. He's the one coming for Kyle Kuzma's neck. If Kyle Kuzma slips up, Shea's right behind him. He's Gen Z. He's tapped into Gen Z. He gives them exactly what they're looking for. He has a uniform or baggy trouser, baggy jean, and some sort of like baggy top. Everything's like kind of baggy with Shea. It's like a nod to like Iverson, if Iverson was now, or like that era of the Diplomats, Jim Jones, like Cameron. It feels like very much so that era. Buka jeans, Tim's. Shea's really tapped into that. And it's like his uniform. Like if I see anyone walking around now or any other NBA player, I'm like, oh, that's Shea's uniform. My favorite would have to be the jacket, those orange Tim's, blue jeans, the hoodie underneath, the LV bag matching the Tim's in a, in a way. It's the most well-balanced to look for me as far as like silhouette and proportions, but the color palette is really nice. Feels good. Like I said, there's there's a few guys up there who are playing on, on a different different wavelength, and Jordan is one of them. So much about attitude, so much about energy. Trendy, but he does trendy well. That's rare. Someone who knows how to mix and match the trendy very well is very, very impressive, but not afraid of silhouettes. He is definitely one of the guys that I think everybody kind of talks about. To me, it's either Jordan, Kuzma, Shea as the guys who are kind of really, really throwing their, their hat in the ring. Out of all three, he's my favorite. So this look is very, uh, I want to say like Kanye, ASAP Rocky, but it feels good though. You got the Prada jacket with the hoodie wrapped around his waist is like a plaid shirt, denim jeans, black sneakers, black sunglasses. Like that's a masterclass in like layering right there. Like that's a lot of layering. Like that's a vibe for sure. So Devin's style just reminds me of like California, San Diego, a little bit like the Bay Area. He loves the Converse. This is a guy who can pretty much get his hand on any sneaker he wants. But the fact that he really intentionally chooses to wear like Converse or a black boot kind of speaks volumes to how particular he is about his style. It feels like the cars he drives. It feels very classic. It feels very timeless. And so yeah, Devin Booker style is gonna be a style that's not gonna like speak to you like in a, in a very loud fashion, but very subtle and uh, it's something that you appreciate over time. So this is James's Christmas day look. The Christmas time usually comes with like the, usually a week where it's like the ugly sweater week. 
This feels like Grinch vibes, but feels like very modern. He has the LV bag, which is super, super exclusive. I like the look, you know, the balaclava is like everybody's latest like fashion accessory. And so he, he worked that into the look. The balaclava has been around for a little while. You know, you've seen a lot of brands recently. Raf Simmons with the Calvin Klein collaboration he did, he really put a focal point on that particular piece. But I think COVID is what really set this off. I think I was looking for a fashion statement to kind of, you know, cover their faces and the balaclava became a hit. I got to give it to PJ. I think he did his the best. I just think the color palette on his look is just phenomenal. You know, the Otega suit, the neon shirt underneath it, and the complimenting green balaclava, and then the LV bag with the, the hints of that electric blue. That's a vibe for sure. Russ is about attitude. What you see is what you get. He's fearless. It's kind of like this, the way he plays, very, very fearless. And you look at this first look with the Tom Brown kilt with the blazer. I thought this was a very, very balanced look. You know, sometimes you'll see guys who opt for the, the kilt and the skirt. Sometimes their tops will be a little bit more fitted. I like that he went for a more boxy top with the blazer and the shirt. And he kept it very schoolboy too. You know, the high socks and the white sneakers. So it felt very like preppy, very classic, but it still felt like Russ. I feel like Russ has toned it down over the last few years. And so Russ is also very, very competitive. And I think he's seen, you know, the Jameses and the PJs and the, and the Kuzmas do a lot of the things that he did, you know, several years ago. And I think he's now taking a different approach, you know, still fearless and still, you know, taking some risky chances as you can see in the Tom Brown look. But he's definitely intentionally toned it down. But Russ is probably the NBA player that's chosen to really dabble in fashion. Russ has kind of taken it and made it his. And so like you said, when I work with guys uh, around the league or entertainment, Russ is one of the first names mentioned, like, hey, I want to I want to emulate some of what he did. I think LeBron's always been consistent. He's always been who he is. He's probably one of the few athletes who's had a lens on him, you know, since the beginning of his career till now. I can go back and look at his looks and they've never been totally out the box. He doesn't take huge risks, but he shows how someone who is grown and professional should dress. It's like if MJ was in this generation, I would expect him to dress like LeBron. And so a lot of his looks are going to be, like I said, they're not looking at Kyle Kuzma, or Russell Westbrook, or James Harden. They're not going to be risky. And it's very intentional. He's not trying to play the game that they're playing. He's appealing to a different audience with this style. I like it. It resonates with me. If you're looking for how to wear a nice top coat with trousers and with boots or sneakers and crop trousers, LeBron is the one for that. Giannis is my guy. I love him as a player. I love the tenacity which he plays with and the energy. I just feel like he can do so much more with his style. Giannis' style is so chill, very casual. Nothing really stands out to me. Sometimes we, we hear him in the conversation as like the face of the NBA. And I think that face needs to come with the wardrobe. When you want to be the face of the NBA, you also got to not only like talk it, but you got to walk it or even off the court. And so I feel like his style just hasn't evolved all the way there yet. Once he figures out what that tunnel can do for him off the court, I think the sky's the limit. So from one African to the, to the other, like Giannis call me, we can do some things. <laughs>And that's fine. He just hasn't um, tapped into like the next evolution of who he can be. So I think once he realizes that there's a room for, you know, these casual looks, these jumpsuit looks, and then he incorporates a little bit more fashion and not even like loud fashion, just like you switch up some, some variety into his looks because he has the build and he has the attitude and the energy to kind of carry anything. So yeah, Ja can really do some damage. Uh, he just hasn't really tapped into that yet. I don't think anyone considers Steph and fashion, you know, together. But now he's made a huge, huge jump. I see him, obviously, he's been sitting out a lot of games this season. So you got a chance to really see his style and I, and I see the evolution. And I think they're doing a great job of making it feel true to, to him. They're brands that make sense. A lot of times too, like the brands that you wear kind of represent who you are too. And so a lot of guys don't pick up on that, but he wears brands that speak to 
his status and where he's at in his life. You know, I don't think he's 100% there yet, but I do like the direction that he's going in the last few years. I gotta go with the corduroy. The other one feels a little too trendy with like the Marnie cardigan, the Rick cargos, and the Bottega boots. And doesn't feel like him, but the, you know, the Prada corduroy overall with the jacket laid over feels a little bit more Stefan to me. Lamella's always been, I struggle to, des to, to describe his style. It's definitely a product of Gen Z, but it's just a whole lot of red. Like it's just, it's too much red. Like there's no denying that red is his favorite color. Like imagine a look where red bubble jacket, red track pants, then red sneakers. That's, that's aggressive. That one's not my favorite, but I'll definitely have to lean with the one that doesn't have as much red. But even that one has a lot of red, red sunglasses, red watch, red leather pants, red sneakers. There's two different things going on. I think there was an area where, you know, we matched everything from head to toe. And then there was an area where you found a way to play with the color wheel. You know, browns go with yellows and yellows go with greens. And I think he's tapped into the area where you matched everything head to toe. He's like, I got the red leather pants, so I'm wearing with these red sneakers, got the black and red tee. I'm gonna throw on my red sunglasses and red watch. And so there's definitely an audience for that, but just definitely not one of my favorites. It's just a whole lot of red. Jason is definitely one of the guys that you would see him mix it up from time to time. Like you'll see him, you know, in a suit, you'll see him in cardigan set, and you'll see him a little bit more flamboyant with a furry jacket and, you know, ripped jeans. And so Jason shows that he has range. Huge fan of what he's doing and just got to keep on like getting there, you know? I could see him slowly becoming what like LeBron and Chris Paul have, have become, just someone who shows guys his size, how you can dress and still be stylish. What I think was interesting about Jason Tatum is that, you know, in a time where the dress code has, has gone away in a, in a sense, he still chooses to, you know, suit up sometime. And it's not just suit up for like a special occasion where it's like the first game of the season or a special event. I think he mixes in suits on a regular basis. Another guy that I see doing that is Denver Nuggets center, Jokic. Jokic just made a real big decision and put in a lot of effort this season, dressing up in suits for pretty much all the big games or all of his games. I think his mindset behind that is like, you know, work is all business. And so he's coming in his, in his business wear. I respect the guy who still fashions a suit even you know when they don't have to because a suit is timeless and classic and it always means business. You know, there was a time where it was rare to see an athlete in Paris or, you know, sitting front row or even able to walk the runway. I think now as you can see, these guys are taking the opportunity to showcase who they are even more, showcase their style even more, and they've taken the opportunity to do it before every game and it's you know, walking the runway, walking the tunnel, and making noise with it. This is GQ. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Salute.